greetings to class 4 students let's start today it is a class of gsc so we will start with our first chapter that is adaptation in plants so let's start with the introduction now we all know that plants are found everywhere on earth and different place of the earth have different climates we know that also that is warm hot cold and very cold so and certain places uh, get a lots of rainfall also certain and while the other places are very dry so due to the weather and the soil condition so plants also affected plants develop so for this reasons plants develop special features to live successfully in their unique surroundings so this process of changing to suit the environment is called adaptation so today our chapter is about the adaptation of plants and the natural home of a plant or an animal is called habitat so adaptation in plants plants are actually divided into two major groups one is terrestrial and another is aquatic so what a terrestrial plant means it means plants that grow on land called terrestrial plant and well and aquatic plants means plants that grow in water now there are there is these dear terrestrial plants are found in different types of habitats so what are those those are deserts hills marshes plains forests grasslands and coastal regions so these are the different types of habitats for the terrestrial plants let's start with desert now what kind of plants grow in deserts um, and uh, what kind of roots they have so we will discuss now deserts we know are areas that receive very little or less rainfall and there the temperature during the day time is very high all of us know it so it is very hot dry and full of sand in desert due to the very little rainfall and uh, there is a very little water availability and due to the scarcity of water desert plants adapt themselves in order to obtain uh, op uh, obtain water from the soil and to prevent loss of water let's take an example of cactus it stores water in its thick green stem and they uses the stored water when there is no rainfall the leaves of the cactus plants change into thin sharp spine which prevent the loss of water through transpiration so what is transpiration means it is the process of losing water through stomata of leaves in previous classes we know we already came to know that what are stomata so next is since these leaves of cactus which are look like thin sharp spines reduce so uh, these uh, leaves uh, the leaves of cactus 
carry out photosynthesis for the plants. Though they look like uh, spines, but they also carry out photosynthesis for the plant. And the root, which is the main important thing, which is of the cactus plant are spread out wide and deep to absorb much water from the soil. Example of the cactus, uh, example of desert plants are cactus, we came to know already, then palm, then acacia. Next, the terrestrial habitats is hills. The temperature in the hills varies from cold to extreme cold. So, during winter there are snowfall also in some areas. So, trees that grow in hills have adapted themselves to survive in these cold conditions. The important trees are pine, then feed, then cedar, the other examples. These are the important examples of the hilly plants. Now, pine trees have a conical shape. We know that. And it is conical shape. The trees that are grow in hills have cones instead of flowers and that is why it is known as conifers. They have the cones instead of flowers, so they are known as conifers. Now, this conical shape of the pine tree helps the snow to slip off its branches very easily and leaves are look like needle in shape and they are very tough and remain fresh and green even when it becomes very cold. So, they are adapted to survive in the cold. These trees that is these coniferous trees do not shed their leaves. So, they are called evergreen trees and they remain green throughout the year. Next terrestrial habitat is marshes. Now, marshes means plenty of water with clay and last year we have read that these clay soil they have a very little air space in between them. So, roots of plants which grow here do not get enough air to breathe. So, plants have adapted some special roots. Like example mangrove trees, they grow in marshes and their roots do not get air under the soil. So, they grow above the soil and these type of roots are called breathing roots. Mainly, we can get this type of trees, we can see this type of trees in Sundarban areas. The next is the plains. Now, the plains have a very moderate climate. It is ni neither too hot nor too cold and there is sufficient rainfall also. So, more mainly uh, people and banyan tree are commonly found here. They shed their leaves in winter to protect themselves from cold and so they are called the deciduous trees and the new leaves appear in the time of spring. Next is uh, forest. Forests are thickly populated with different kinds of plants. We all know it. There are a variety of trees, uh, then shrubs, then herbs are found here. There are evergreen deciduous and coniferous trees in forest. 
and forest are the home to a wide variety of animals and birds. Now the California redwood, coast redwood and giant sequoia are the tallest and the largest trees in the world. Next terrestrial habitat is the grasslands. Grasslands are large areas of land covered with grass and wild flowers. And they are very, uh, these uh, roots of grasses and small plants, they make the soil very suitable for farming. Because their roots bind the soil together. Grasslands uh, do not receive uh, much rainfall. So the trees, uh, not many tall trees, there are not many tall trees or bushes, uh, they are scattered, uh, small trees are scattered throughout the grasslands, there are scattered trees and all grasslands are the home of variety of wild animals. Next, the last part of the terrestrial habitat is coastal regions, that means the regions near the sea coast receive high rainfall. And water can be very salty. So coconut tree, rubber tree and pepper are some of the important trees that grows here. So we have just finished the terrestrial plant portion. Now we will go to our next section that is about the aquatic plant. Now aquatic plants are of three types one is floating plants then the next is fixed plants and the third one is underwater plant now we know what our aquatic plant means that means plant grows in water first we will discuss about the floating plants now these plants float freely in water And floating plants have adapted to make their bodies light, which help them to float very easily. Example, water hyacinth, important example, water hyacinth, water lettuce and the scientific name of water lettuce is Pistia, Pistia, P-I-S-T-I-A, Pistia, which are commonly found floating plant. They have a very spongy bodies filled with air which make them light and helps them to stay afloat. Now Ulfia, the scientific name of duckweed is another important of the floating plant. Next is fixed plants. These plants Though it is aquatic plants, but they have roots that are fixed to the mud at the bottom of the pond. They have adapted to able to float, get enough air and sunlight to make food and avoid getting damaged by floating, by flowing water. They have hollow and fixable stems, help the plants to stay afloat and bend with the flow of water. And thus, they never damage by the strong water currents. They have a flat and broad leaves, help the plants to get sufficient air and sunlight. They have a waxy, uh, waxy coating leaves to keep them waterproof. Stromata present on the upper surface of the leaves. Example of the fixed plants, lotus and water lily. The next is underwater plants. Some plants remain completely underwater. They are also called submerged plant. And they, they have adapted to remain underwater and to breathe underwater. Example, hydrilla and tape grass. They are water underwater plants their roots fix them to the bottom of the point 
they have very thin flexible stem that offer little resistance to water currents hydrilla they have a very tiny uh, leaves while tape grass has narrow ribbon like leaves the leaves of wonder water plants they do not have stomata they breathe through small air space in their stems and these plants remove the carbon dioxide present in the water released by the aquatic animals so we almost finish the chapter adaptation of plants now the most important thing that is i select some words which is very important words that is uh the definitions definitions of adaptations the process of changing to suit the environment is called adaptation now definition of habitat the natural home of plant or an animal next definition of breeding roots mangrove trees grow in marshes and their roots grow above the soil called breeding roots next is evergreen trees some trees do not shed their leaves and they remain green throughout the year called evergreen trees next important word transpiration it is a process of losing water through the stomata of leaves called transpiration next is deciduous trees some trees shed their leaves in winter and new leaves appear in spring called deciduous trees and conifers trees that grow in hills have ca have cones instead of flowers so these are the very important um words uh so you have finished today's chapter thank you all